Good morning, Year 6. It is Thursday the 11th of February and we are reading from the Titanic again today. Okay, so today we are, within our comprehension section, doing quite a lot of summarising work. So we're going to be reading a different text today and we're going to be summarising parts of it and very importantly we're going to be retrieving information from it as well. Okay, so today I have picked um, some information from the National Geographic for Kids website, which is a brilliant website. I don't know if you've ever used it, um, but I thoroughly recommend it. There are so many areas where you can explore, find out about the world, animals, nature, so many things that you can have a little look at. Um, but I went to the, the history section and I've looked at uh, the Titanic facts. Uh, so I have put a link on your page, so if you'd like to go to this page, you can read the entire thing. It tells you all about the classes, uh, the way the Titanic was built. Um, but we today are focusing on the the main event, really, the, the most devastating event, when the Titanic hit the iceberg. So I'm going to read through these pages with you, and then I will explain how I'd like you to do your task today. Um, but just before I start reading, I just want to remind you, this is what you were sent through, we are going to be lifting the information from the text today and we are going to be putting them on this timeline of events. Right, so I'm starting at point nine, but as I said, if you wish to go back and read the whole article, you can follow the link on your page. So number nine here. Just before midnight on day five, in the freezing cold North Atlantic Ocean, an iceberg loomed out of the darkness. Too big to quickly change direction, Titanic scraped along the side of the ice, tearing holes in at least four sections of the hull. Now the hull is this part, this black part of the ship on the picture there. The captain of Titanic, Edward John Smith, and his crew knew that the collision meant disaster. Titanic would sink in just a few hours. Just distress signals were sent out to nearby ships and passengers were ordered to get to the lifeboats fast. But there was one very big problem. Titanic only carried 20 lifeboats, only enough to hold around half the people on board. What's worst, the first lifeboats were launched half empty, wasting precious spaces. In panic, many people jumped into the ocean to escape the sinking ship. But just a reminder there that they jumped into the ocean with icebergs around, which tells you that that water was extremely cold. And we'll come back to that in a moment. So we're at 12 now. As Titanic sank... The bow, which is the front, went down first, causing the stern, the back, to rise out of the water and into the air. At around 2am, this tilt caused the ship to break in two, sending all those still on board into the freezing cold ocean. In the minus two degree water, most passengers who went into the sea would have died from the cold within 15 minutes. Some managed to survive a little longer by treading water or clinging onto bits of floating wreckage. The first ship, ship to respond to Titanic's distress signals was called the RMS Carpathia. But despite setting out immediately and travelling at top speed, she didn't arrive until around 3.30 a.m., over an hour after the Titanic had sunk. On arrival at the disaster, the RMS Carpathia rescued those who had made it into the lifeboats. There were around 705 survivors in total, and all were transported safely to New York, USA. But tragically... More than 1,500 people lost their lives on the Titanic. Most never to be seen again. In the days following the wreckage, 
the ships headed out to the disaster area and recovered 300 bodies from the water. These were either buried at sea or taken to Halifax in Canada, which was the nearest major port to be identified. So that's such a sad story. And I think it's really important that we really reread these points, these main points that happened to the Titanic and to the poor people that were on that ship. Okay, so what you're now going to be doing is thinking, you've got nine boxes here. You might wish to add a few. You might not even want all of them. But I've put nine there for you, which I think might help you to structure your summary today. And I'm just going to model the first part with you. So if we just have a little look um, here. So we know that it was just before midnight. I need to know that. So we're talking at midnight, freezing cold North Atlantic Ocean, an iceberg loomed out of the darkness. So we've got our iceberg was seen at midnight. They were too big to change direction. So I might put that, that is one quite key point there. So if I go now to my first point, I may need to make my writing a little bit smaller. Midnight. Iceberg seen too big to change direction. Now from that same paragraph, and here I might just change my colour, this is really important because this is actually what happened to the Titanic. It scraped along the side and it tore holes in four sections of the hull. So I'm going to keep that as a separate point. Now you might not find two points in every single paragraph, um, but I've separated those two out because I want the time when they saw the iceberg and then as a second point, what happened specifically to the sections of that hull. So if I then go, here's my next one down here. Um, so it's scraped, that was the word that it used, wasn't it? Scraped along the iceberg and four so holes in four sections of, and this is our technical word, the hull. So we don't need to say bottom of the boat, <laughs> we can say hull. There we go. Right, so I've started you off there. You might, um, when you look at all of the points that you want to include, you may wish to have combined those two, but I felt it important to keep them separately. That's just my personal opinion. Um, it's completely up to you how you do the rest. So reading these points here that are on the, the text we've sent you, can you summarise the main points onto this timeline? Uh, good luck with that, and I will see you again, or speak to you again in tomorrow's lesson.